So, good morning on day nine. Good night's sleep last night. It's half seven. Um, been a bit of a balls up because I couldn't be bother taking all my stuff off the bike. I haven't gone and checked on it yet. I'm hoping it's all going to be all right. And I'm wearing the same t shirt. <laughs> Um, nobody's going to come close enough to notice anyway. Uh, so, I've uh, been having a look at the map, everything else. So I've just booked a campsite. I'm looking at um, hotels and everything. It's just stupid prices. Stupid. Um, I'm not paying that. So, we've got a campsite that's half an hour away from um, Ferry. The ferry's quarter past 11 in the morning. So, gives me plenty of time as long as I'm off the site for. Well, you've got to be there an hour early. Need to be off site for nine o'clock. So, it's just another early wake up, get packed away, get done. So, I've decided that I am going to go to La Tripoli. I can either go straight to the campsite, um, which will take me about four hours on motorways. Um, or I can go through Belgium and Luxembourg, it'll take me five and a half hours. But I'm going to go La Chapeau. Um It's half seven now. I should get on the road for about half eight, hopefully. Um, it's four, four hours something. It's probably going to take me five hours to get to La Chapeau. So if I settle, let's say if I settle for nine, right, I'll get there about two o'clock ish. Um, spend an hour there, two o'clock, three o'clock, and then it's a couple of hours. So I should get to the campsite around five o'clock, which is about right. Get pitched up, um, make some food, um, maybe have a beer. Because I said it last night for having a beer in it. Um, when I say a beer, I have a beer, um, and then that'll be it. But there should be a, a decent run up that bit of a course from Luttrepore to, to Calais. So that that's the plan. That's it. Um, I'll see you on the road. Well, it's uh, twenty to ten, and. I have 327 kilometres to go and I kept telling myself right I'll take a break at every hundred mark so I've done 400 I think it was 450 I can't remember so I've done 100 k uh, it's more way isn't it what can you say stick some tunes on and just get it done with I thought I'd mention a weird phenomenon that I get I, I don't I, I'd be interested to know if anybody else has this as well. Whenever my visor's down, and I'm really bad for not riding with my visor down, I mean, I'm doing 130 kilometres an hour, whatever that is, um, and I'll ride with my, with my visor up, like that. And that screen doesn't do too bad, gives me a bit of protection, and I get minimal bumps, and it's a really bad habit, because I've got no protection. I'll close it and then you can hear me a bit better. So, but when I close it, right, and I've always had this, I don't know if it's the V twins or not, I get an itchy nose. It proper tickles my nose. I don't know why, right? I get a proper itchy nose. What's all that about? Does anybody else experience the same? Is it just me? Worth noting as well that the cheap throttle lock, other than that pad, keep slipping that little white bit there right and get it in just the right place it just needs gluing in properly it holds pretty well as you can see it's not doing too bad there and it just gives you that especially on these long motorway runs or whatever it just gives you that extra oh, 
oh yeah, you, you're not constantly got your hand in that position or whatever. So you can just rest your hand on it, you know what I mean? With minimal sort of impact. So, yeah, good buy. Worth the money. Oh, 20 quid of it or whatever. Right. I'll catch you soon. I've got 21 kilometres and then if I see a, uh, a brew stop, I'm going to stop for a coffee. Catch you in a bit. So, I've got 182 kilometres left to go and I'm going to have to pull in to services again because I need fuel that I'll get ripped off 2 euros a litre. That's to go along with the um, tolls that I've paid. So I paid I think about seven or eight euro yesterday. I've just gone through one and it took eleven euro somewhat, eleven euro fifty. And then I've gone through another bull, so I've got another ticket yet, still to pay. So I don't know how much I'm going to pay for that one. So it's bloody expensive coming through France on the tolls but it is a lot quicker it pays your money it takes your chance to be fair they've not been that busy and I've been able to keep going at 130 now I'm hoping that says 35 kilometres and I did see a sign back there that said fuel in 20 and that was about 10 kilometres to go I think so I'm hoping to see another sign but I'll say 10 kilometres or less pull in and get bum ropes for some more fuel so it's half 11 now e well I have 30 minutes to go I finally finished paying on the toll road I think it's cost me about 20 euros today alone uh, so about 30 euros in total it's just not what we're used to we've got M6 toll and that's it and then I've just literally rolled through a rate shower. Only lasted a few minutes. No matter sticking you know, on about turn your fucking indicator off. So it's dropped down to 18, it was 20 odd. A bit cooler here. So half hour away. Going to this. Getting closer to the seaside. Closer to home. Home with that temperature's gonna come up again. Right? I'll catch up with you in a bit. This is a McDonald's. Not at a McDonald's all the time I've been away. Oh, well, Mackey's actually needed a wee. Such is life. I thought, oh, well, well, I'm at it. I might as well, you know, take the opportunity. Right on to Ognudu Park, then oh, take the first right. That's loud, that love. I don't think this is the way out. Turn right on to Ognudu Park, then enter the roundabout. Where the soddy knows the way out? Turn right on to Ognudu Park, then enter the roundabout. Yeah, 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 but which is way out, woman? Is this way out? Oh, this is way out. At the roundabout, take the first exit to D925. It's not, I've not put my headphones back in because I'm only 17 minutes away. And I forgot, I was sodding loud. Turn right on to Ognudu Park, then enter the roundabout. Turn that down a bit. Bloody deafening. At the roundabout, take the first exit to D925. That was better, eh? Sun's popped its aid back out, which is good. Currently 21 degrees. 16 minutes away from uh, Mont Hune Cemetery. At the roundabout, take the second exit. At the roundabout, take the second exit to D925. At the roundabout, take the second exit. At the roundabout, take the second exit to Route Epitemo Tail 925. At the roundabout, take the second exit. At the roundabout, take the second exit to D2. At the roundabout, take the first exit. At the roundabout, take the first exit to D1314. At the roundabout, take the first exit to Route du Trepor. At the roundabout, take the third exit. At the roundabout, take the third exit to Ognu Paul Pare. In two and a half kilometres, turn right on to Rue Albert Edouard Dixon. 
so here we are just up the road three minutes away I don't know how close the VW was to get up my chuff but it's not like I can go anywhere so it's quite a few years since I've been here and I'm hoping that I can remember where the grave is sort of remember but that means I'll have to uh, get on to Commonwealth War Graves I've got a rough idea where a bet it is why do you keep getting so close, you dickhead? Can't do anything, can I? Uh, numpty. Oh, numpty. Oh, the dickhead. Turn right on to Rue Albert Edouard Leekthorn. This has changed. Oh, it's there. If I remember rightly. In 800 is... metres, turn left on to C1. Uh, shut you up. Now, if I remember rightly. These were the German ones, and great great grandpappy Portland was up to the middle and to the left. So I'm gonna go and have a quick wander up, but I'm gonna get the drone out as well on me and get a drone shot of the cemetery. Why not? Oh, my keys out, get my phone out, and I do remember going all the way up to that bit and putting it in the uh visitors book of <coughs> last time I come <coughs> so this was uh, not hewn it was a cemetery <coughs> <coughs> excuse me and anybody who's not been over and visited any of the uh, Commonwealth war graves World War One all of these throughout France and Belgium and you just drive along and you'll just come across little ones and um, Every single one have been handed this land in perpetuity has been handed to right, so I sort of remember it were about that many there's the Germans. See, they didn't get much about the Germans and the other thing that I found slightly not ironic but you know, they're still facing each other. And I've been to some of them trenches and some were all really on with that. And then if you think of you know, the graves are, they're almost taught at all. Uh, 4th of May, 17, age 23, March, April. They could even be shooting at each other. And then for time stand stills for them, still facing each other. It was about that far in, on this left hand side. August 18, there it is. 15967, Sergeant. James Edward Partlin of the Border Regiment died on the 21st of August 1918. Gone but not forgotten. I have suffered. This is my the grave of my great 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 no great great granddad um, James Edward Partlin. In 1914, at the start of the war, he joined up. It was before the formation of the Powell's Regiment. So Accrington Powell's hadn't even been thought of before then. Um, so he joined the Border Regiment, which are based in Carlisle. And I've been up to the museum and I've got a full printout and I've got all his full military records. The one thing we couldn't find out is when he got promoted to sergeant. Now I do know he was 38 when he died and he joined in 14 and he died in 18. <coughs> so he died in August of 18. And in 14, he joined up, did the basic training, and they, they shipped him off to the Balkans. Some of you who know anything about World War One history will have heard of this place, the first place he was stationed. So he was at Gallipoli. So the border regiment were at Gallipoli. And obviously, when they retreated out of Gallipoli, he then went to Egypt. So he was in Egypt for a while before they sent him over to here. So then they came to the fields of Flanders, whereas he, he was involved in Passchendaele, the first battle of the Somme, at some point during that, um, he was gassed, uh, hospitalised, and then um, he, he went back to his regiment, and it was the third battle of the Somme, just prior to that, so I think he was wounded for a couple of weeks before he died, so the beginning of August, so around this sort of time. Um, he'll have been in hospital in 1918. Um, and I think they used to bring them down the canal system 
Um, and like I say, I don't know where the hospital were, but there was a hospital around here. And this cemetery um, are all those from who died at the hospital. Now, luckily for us, for me, uh, there was a nurse at the time called Edith Appleton. And Edith Appleton had a diaries and they were published after the war. So James is mentioned in those diaries. She was his nurse. And um, we have a first-hand account that the family story that my mum told me, because it was her grandma, because I was brought up by my grandpa, and she had, had a long story. Right, so um, it, she was told, right, she had four children, and the youngest was my great-grandma. And so great-great-grandma and me, Portland, Travelled all the way from Accrington. We don't know how, because they were quite poor. So whether it was a church or, or whatever, paid for it. And she travelled all the way from Accrington. 1918, the war was still on. Travelled all the way here. And he hung on. Now, the family story is that he kept asking for May. I want May. I want May. I want May. Um, and he had a, 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 a shrapnel injury to his back and um, he, he kept asking for me obviously it, it, it was deteriorating by the time she'd reached here he could only me mumble mm, he couldn't even get the word may out but he hung on until she got here and he died in her arms so yeah and like I say I've got a piece of history evidence that supports that because Edith Appleton mentions um, James and me um, and says how, what such a pitiful thing she was and um, how, in a way, she was glad he went, he weren't hanging on. And these words at the bottom, all the families got to choose. So the Commonwealth War Graves asked all the families of all these people what words they want on the bottom. So she chose, gone but not forgotten, I have suffered, because he did, you know, in his last couple of weeks on this earth, he suffered. But not only that, he did four years, four years in, in, in all that mayhem and madness, um, and at some point were promoted, promoted to sergeant. And I guess when you look at some of the ages um, around, you know, 20, 21, 26, 30, 23, do you know what I mean? 21. They were all young men. Um, whether he was just like one of the last ones around and that's why he got it, I don't know. But, um, you know, it, it had been not only a sergeant, I'm guessing a bit of a big brother to folk, you know what I mean? And um, it's hard for us to imagine what they, they would have seen um, and, and the stuff they would have gone through. So it's always a bit, um, so I'm a, a second time of visiting in here and I think if I ever do get over on here I'll, I'll always come back and it's for me it's it's nice and I'd like to bring my grandchildren here because um, otherwise you know it, it, the stories don't live on do they do you know what I mean so and, and they deserve to so And that's that's the story of James Edward Parling. He, he worked at Accrington Brickyard, um, and there was some letters published um, in the local Observer and things when he died. So yeah, so it, it's um, I just thought it was fitting to to come and, and visit his grave once again. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow. Between the crosses, row on row. That mark our place. And in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived 
I felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Until the next time. Okay, so on to find my camp. Quickest way, it says it's uh, 147 kilometres. It's just short of two hours. Probably need to refuel again before I get there. But it's 24 degrees. Hopefully, it'll be the same up there. It should be a nice, pleasant evening. Get pitched up, make some tea, try and find somewhere for a couple of beers. Room not to. I bet James Edward had a few beers. He'll have been supping summer. There's no way for four years. He didn't have a few. A few scoops. Good lad. So here's to you, Jimmy Edwards. Jimmy Edward Brightly. 105 years since he died. That's a little bit of it. It's quite proud that, you know, one of his relatives is still coming to visit in his grave. 105 years after his death. There we go. Bit of the sea for you. Looks like somebody's having a car boot all their own. My well, missus is in here. She'd have been stopping at that. Pull over. Pull over. Let's have a rummage. Loves a good rummage, does have a lass. Oh, aye. So this is La Trapola. I'll have to see if I can talk one of the grandkids in to uh, coming over. I'll try and get an hour Thomas on back. He's having none of it. This time, yet. Yeah, I might talk him into it. He likes sitting on it. He don't like it when I start it up though. But he likes sitting on it and pretending to ride it. So start. At the roundabout, take the first exit. Alright, Gladys. At the roundabout, take the first exit to Route Day. Now I did think, oh, I'll nip to a net or a lid or something. Get a couple of supplies for tonight. No, they don't open on a Sunday here. Yeah? Don't know why. But they don't. I've long argued that we shouldn't open on a Sunday. It should go back to like it where we're now, Rick. It now we're open on a Sunday. It's like any other day at week now. Give it back to the families, that's what I say. Give Sunday back to the families. All them lot who have to go to work on a Sunday. For everybody else to go and do something on a Sunday. No, shut it all. Shut the lot. That's why you used to have half day closing during the week. In Accrington, it used to be on a Wednesday. Wednesday were half day closing. That's because. Bugger all we're open on a Sunday, so any of them who worked at shops and that lot, obviously work Saturday. So when could they do their, their stuff? Half day closing. At the roundabout, take the second exit to the 1314. Don't get half day closing anymore. At the roundabout, take the third exit to the 925. I wonder how long. I didn't even look. If I dodge. Um, like I say, I have found it where you can say. Avoid tolls, but you can avoid motorways. So at the roundabout, take the third exit. Uh, settings, navigation, avoidances, motorways, save, go back, go back, where to? History. That's where I'm going. To go. Start new route. Calculated. At the roundabout. Take the third exit to D925. Oh, it's not much extra. Only 15 minutes extra. Let's follow this. Yeah, just pull out on me, why don't you? <laughs> Fucking idiots. There's a different rule in France I didn't know about. In 800 metres, take the slip road on the right 
to the 940 tour back. Probably some stupid fucking rule. You travel all the way around Europe, everybody's alright. Closer you get back to bloody England, people start turning into dicks. Take the slip road on the right to the 940 tour deck. Oh, easy there, chick. And that will rate up my ass as well. And that VW that will rate up me chuff. When I'm going up that hill towards the cemetery. He nearly went in back of me. I swear to God. Oh, God. Right, I reset that speedo when I landed at Calais. And it's 3,500 kilometres that I've done. And this one is uh, 120 kilometres away. And then if I add on from Accrington to Dover, there and back, it won four and a half thousand kilometres that I thought. So, these two boys up in front have been behind me for ages. And we've just been winding it on a little bit. Anyway, it's all coming up there then, I got a flash in my face. I'm thinking, oh shit. But then I'm also thinking, well hang on, if he's got me from front, fuck you, I've got a wrench on me front. So anyway, I've slowed it down a bit anyway. And this guy here at the back, I think the jerk. Pulled up alongside me and he's giving me sign language as in, ah, you're okay, it's flash from front, fuck em. International language of uh, fuck the three cameras, I think. I think you should pull up alongside him and have a dance. There we go, mates, now. Oh, I'm going to retire, mate. Fuck them. What are you going to do about it? I guess it's only if they pull me over straight away. I bet he's listening to so much shite. 80s German electro pop. Craft work. Oh, what do you reckon? I met two guys at services when I were uh, on my way up. They were on the way back from Switzerland. They just had two weeks. Right. I didn't quite believe the, uh, the, the trip I'd had. That's because we were on one of them bloody, oh, what model is it? 1800 Honda automatic. Oh, what about that? Might as well wait, oh. Look at all go. Oh, yeah. Look at all go. Oh, in fact, can we? No. Oh no, the red lights have stopped the park. Pick a side, friends. 
So this is to Franz Ferdinand. No, no, I'll see what I did there. Gaza Chiefs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Bauhaus. Nina. 99 Red Blues. 99 Red Blues. Ultra Rocks, Vienna. Oh, no, that's Austria. Same thing, boy. Hit over Austria. <coughs> and the Benem. Ugh, chuffy down this. Right, 45 minutes. That's all so. About time I get booked. 900 in. meters, turn right onto D215. Gladys, you're a pain. Uh, so that means about time I get booked in. Half, uh, booked in, 10 to up, half six. We need to try and find a shop for some beer. I have more room to carry in it. I've got some grub. Plenty of grub. Mm. Oh. Turn right at the traffic light. Not oh, mind you. In seven and a half kilometres, turn right on to Show Sebrino. Oh, kebab shop's open. It's always a kebab. Turn left on to Place du Maréchal Force, oh, then take the first right. Alright then. No, I don't think you meant down here, did you, cop? Did you? Nah, you didn't. Did you? When possible, make a U-turn, then take the first right. I need some fuel myself. Shit a break. How far have we got left? 45 kilometres, 42 left. Whew. That's not good, is it? That's not good at all. Turn right onto Ruba Devry. Where's it go down here? Can't turn left here. You're kidding me, woman. Turn left onto Rue de la Basque, then take the first right. Right. Left on here. Turn right onto Rue de Londres, then take the first left. Turn left on to Rudu Park, then take the first left. Turn left on to Rudu Park. At the end of the street, turn right. I don't think I can get out of here. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. All right, Gladys, I'll let you off this time. Turn right on to Rudu Devry. In seven kilometers, turn right on to Show Sebrino. Right, we got ready to take that off. Get that off. Up ahead. Ah, oh, fuel. What a good do. How do we get some fuel? From here. Do, 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 do. Butt gas. Oh, dear me. Right. <coughs> <sighs> SP uh, E10. Good, good. Should I hope so. Hard work. <coughs> Need a leaner. <coughs> In six kilometres, turn right on to Show Sebrino. Shit over here. Oh, 80 limit. And it's expensive. Cost me a fortune to get through France today. I just pulled over for a roadside pit. I'll tell you what, you get back on, you feel so much better for it. I've got 20 minutes to go, and I'm thinking, oh, come on. It's getting to drag it on a bit, this now. I have my wee. I'm happy as Larry. I'll ride for another hour. Although I do need to find the shop. And I were a bit gutty because there's whiz past one then anyway, I'm not turning back for it. If that one's on, there must be another. You're not telling me you can't get a bottle of wine on a Sunday in France. I'm having none of that. Lovely day for it though. Café, to bag and boulangerie. Shut. Oh look, there's one. Pizza vending machine. That's the third one I drove past. I drove one last week. I told my missus I was like, just drove past a vending machine for pizzas and then I just drove past one back down there and there's another one vending machine for pizzas if I weren't in such a rush to get set up it's only 17 minutes away it's got to be worth a try hasn't it just for the sake of doing it vending machine for pizza 24 hour pizza and a vending machine and about 5 euro robots works under yeah. 
in 400 meters, turn left on Tarudu Kandu Drador. Turn left on Tarudu Kandu Drador. <coughs> okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. I shall see you at 6.30. <laughs> Oh, that's a good doing it. You've got a bar and the bar opens at R6. Woo! I'm just in time for me to get the tent up. Fag first. <laughs>